Disclaimer, this video, like all videos featured on this channel, is definitely intended for mature audiences. This video is likely to contain profane language, content is inappropriate for minors. Video is not for kids. Welcome to the Dr. Green Dumb Show. Lord of mercy. Welcome to the Dr. Green Thumb Show live on YouTube, Twitch, Discord, and the home site, www.bereal.tv. I'm Dr. Green Thumb. Hello. To my right, Mr. Goodlight, DJ C Minus. What up? Happy Monday. How you doing? Good, sir. Good. All right. We got the iconic one, Eric Big Drum Bobo in the house. Buddy. Up in the treehouse crew, we got Bolton Blombo, Bra Bra, and the Dominator. <laughs> What's going on, B? How are you doing? I'm all right. And our special guest today in the house, Tyler Yahweh, up in here. What's up? What's good? Yeah, welcome. Good. Man, this is amazing. I can't, I can't believe I'm here right now. Oh, man, it's good to have you up in here, man. We also got the Concentrate King, Cali Blaith. What up, fam? Squeeze it off. You know what I'm saying? Welcome to the show. Um, man, good to have you up in here. You've been working hard since day one. And, uh, you know, it's been a climb, but a beautiful one, yeah? Oh man, it's been an amazing journey, and we're still on it. You know, the the road is keep it just keeps going, and it, I won't stop for nothing. Yeah, man. No. I mean that. I, like when you're when you're coming up, man, that's the drive. And I think as as you're you're going through, you know, navigating the course, right? You got to have that drive all the time, at, at like, all moments of my life. Like I wake like. My album drops in like four days, and I'm already working on another project. Already working oh, on another God. one. Already working on the next one. Like I, I want more. I want more. I want more. I want to keep creating until we find something that's the golden, the golden egg. You know. I think vision is important, man. You know what I mean? Like when you cut, I, I think sort of as an artist, you guys can, you know, chime in on this. Is some artists don't really have a vision; they just go in as they go, but. Other artists definitely got the vision. I want my sound to sound like this. I want my look to look like this. I want to say this type of shit here. Damn, I violated that. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, like it's, 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 I, I think when you have more of a vision when you start, it, it's easier because you know exactly where you want it, you know, where you want to go. You got all your goals set up. And, uh, you know, it's just about putting in the work to get there at that point. Yeah. This whole journey has been like a blessing and then being around you and seeing your like you come up from nothing like you guys created a way for us especially for like the underground and that real just like in your face music like we're gonna do what we want we want to create what we want and we're gonna show the world that we can take it over and seeing that and being around that energy is just is just I'm honing in into it like I love it you know and right now we're in a, in a weird space in music yes. <laughs> like, a very weird space and uh i just want to i've been focusing on just going back to my roots and figuring out what the real music is what is the real sound why is this music lasting so long why is the frequencies lasting so long right. so i just been going back and just going back and really listening to myself you know i like that you say that the frequencies because really nobody pays attention to that at all <laughs> right it, it you know like the old school hip hop, there there was a lot of layers and different frequencies. Right now, it seems like there's just maybe one, because it seems like most of the labels that sign an artist today are like they don't want to take chances. They want okay, well, homie's got a hit over here. We need something like that, so we need to find a producer that can give give us something that's similar to this over here, and then they all follow suit. And there's less uniqueness, less frequencies, if you will right very low vibrational yeah man 
Got to keep those vibes up. Got to keep yeah. it. Got to keep it high. Got to keep it high. It started for you in Florida, right? When you was out there. <clears throat> as it started youngster, in right? Orlando, Florida. I'm from Orlando. A small town called Altamont Springs, you know. Very, very crazy. Very small town. Everybody knows each other. And I moved to L.A. I drove from Florida all the way to L.A. Slept on Venice Beach. Mm. Melrose, Fairfax, studios, cars. And then I just figured out the way, you know. Yeah. Believing in the dream and taking a chance. Oh, believing in it. And putting it to work. And that was like the best part of my life, just going on that journey, you know. So I got to see a lot of things before I even came to California, like opening like opening up for Matt artists like Posey before I even signed to him. Um, Joey Badass. We can, we can go like Travis Scott. You did a lot like, of crazy work. And, like with the owners of Rolling Loud, Tark and Matt, they they used to put me on every show in Florida from like Tampa, Orlando, Miami. And I was, I was doing it every single week, just back to back, back to back, back to back. And that was like my, my practice ground. Yes. Know, like being on the stage like every single week. You yeah. Know? I, I, I think stuff like that sharpens you. Uh, for sharpens. sure. What were we gonna say, Bubba? All, all those all those uh, people, they they saw you from like social media, but where was it like even before then, what's what's your background even before? It was then? the it was the the groundwork that I put into the streets in Orlando. Like I was like going singing to people, selling CDs opening up for mad different shows like showcases even if it was five to three two people in the crowd opening up for bars just figuring out like going to going to studio sessions random studio sessions i was just that person that was just cre creating stuff like always curating like no matter what i was always doing something i was always motivated like even from the myspace days oh shit <clears throat> something's your phone headphone went out yeah the phones went out Nah, but um, I was always just, like, MySpace days, I was doing, like, bulletins and stuff, throwing parties and freestyle sessions, like, just doing things that people wasn't really doing. And I remember when I did my first song, like, in high school, <clears throat> and I dropped a video, like, what I did, um, I put the, the radio station's number at the end of the music video. And I had everybody and like everybody and their mom just calling the radio station over and over again, over and over again. And wow. they ha they finally had to put my song on the radio in Orlando because they're like, "Who's all these kids that keep calling for this this song?" So we end up going up to the radio station, and they just they're like, "Yo, whatever you did, people just won't stop calling these phones." It's like, all that work. Yeah. So yeah, you know, like oh. like uh, when you were doing these festival joints, you know, I. I I say it to 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 cats, you know, coming up, like do it, performing the music as much as you can. That like makes you so much better as you go, and then finally, you know, the right set of eyes and ears, you know, get uh, magnetized to you, and it opens things up. Like that's how you met post uh, post manager, right? Yeah, that's how I met uh, postman uh, Dre London. He uh, saw you at one of these festivals ripping, right? Uh, yeah. Well, that's how Tess found me. He found me like ripping at a festival. Uh, I was on. I was doing the first Rolling Loud, and um, I think it was Oakland. It was uh, Oakland, and it was probably like a hundred people out there, and I was the first person to go on, and. <clears throat> I was just going crazy. I was crowd surfing. I was starting mosh pits and I was throwing out free weed. I was just like, just out there. And um, oh, one day so I was on Instagram kind of like, I was just ranting like, yo, I'm doing this all by myself. I was, I had no management. Everybody thought I was signed, but I was just out here just thugging and doing it myself. And Tess hit me up, my manager. He was like, yo, whatever your situation is, like we about to make this happen for you right away. And I was like, shit, let's go. So it's been like six years we've been we've been running this shit. Like. I know that must have been been uh, like the feeling of validation for all the work you had been putting it up to that up to that point. Yeah, me and my manager Tess, we just we've been working out hands on with this shit from like day one, like no no stop, like in the studio with me, even sleeping in the same hotel. We had to do that a couple of times, you know, just constantly grinding no no matter what. Like we haven't had nothing. Yeah. It's crazy. Have you tripped on Rolling Loud lately, man? It's just, it's loud. Oh, it's oh, like man. it's one of the biggest festivals right now. They're like throwing three day festivals Huge. now, right? Yeah. yeah. It was, it was, uh, they showed, they should, they were, they were showing some of it on you. Well, they were streaming it live on YouTube. 
Yeah. And it was ridiculous. Yeah. It's honestly crazy to me because I watched it. <clears throat> like, you watched it grow I, up. I watched it when it was like on a, a white board, you know, like, uh, like, like the I, idea, the idea of it. And uh, I, I was there for like every little second of that, even when they had another festival in Tampa called Takeoff Landing. And it was like a, a mini festival with like multiple venues. And then the main was at like this big ass venue. And it was Travis Scott was headlining actually that. It was like before Travis was like really Travis. Before he blew up, yeah. And I actually ended up opening up right before Travis went on and stuff. So it was like they we they really like like worked on this shit like from the bottom, like Yeah, they it seemed like a great idea and then you know their great idea just blew the hell up. Yeah. Like when you put the right resources behind it and the right team, something like that could blow up. It's just like an artist, like the now you got the right team around you and you got all these different looks. I mean, when you think about some of the collabs you've been able to do, Post Malone, Gunna, Wiz Khalifa, The Baby, um, Tommy Lee, Triple Red, PMB Rock, rest in peace. Um, and Juice World. I mean, damn, man. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you did some rounds. Yeah, man. Rest in peace, all my brothers. And Billy Joel Armstrong. How about that? Like, how did that feel like to do somebody something with somebody like in a completely different genre it's just dope that like he is the reason why i even make music too like i had every green day album as a kid and yeah. like having a first that guitar just trying to play the music and wanting to be that rock star that's what like they i really looked up to them you know yeah so it's like being able to have the like that a phone call away and like have random facetimes with billy joe armstrong that shit is like still like so surreal to me and I just love it. I just love that I can finally be around my peers. And I manifested it. And I dreamed this already. Like, yo, I knew I was going to be here Hell yeah. and be around these folks one day. And I like, there's there's people I still wish I got to met. If I had that, that if I thought of, like, kept going, like, harder, I would have probably met them one day, you know? They, hey, you, you, you just <clears throat> have not met them yet. Yeah, that's that's true. Cause but Michael Jackson's gone, man. Well, we need yeah, him. I hear you. I hear you that, on that one. That would have been so fire. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been so fun. Now you told us uh, you were in a studio session till six in the morning, and um, you know you woke up to some shrooms to wake you up. Oh yeah, I went to sleep with some like that was a good dream too. After going to sleep on shrooms, oh it's like euphoric. But woke up to a little microdose, you know. Yeah. To get the day started, it keeps me keeps everything bright around me. Man. I think it'll get yeah microdoses will definitely pep you up. Oh man. I like microdosing right before I work out too. Really? Yeah, right before I work okay. out. Okay. Like, Hear that, Bobo? Or were you in a portal right there? <laughs> no, no. I was just gonna say that. I mean, <laughs> this is I the try, king of macro dosing. I, I tried. Right I tried to microdose, but I mean, it seems to me that some people say that you know my microdose is not a microdose. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> yeah, go to a it's portal. It's a macro dose. Yeah, yeah, exactly. you know? Your portal dose. Yeah. You know, I mean, is it, I, you defeat the purpose this? of a micro. Is it oh, a yeah. sucking place? Yeah, what's wrong? <laughs> there's nothing wrong with. It. I'm just saying it's, it's a different feeling. It's proper. Like if you yeah. did a proper microdose, you'd probably feel awake after your workout, as opposed and you to you barely work. feel it when you take it. That micro means you're not really feeling the high. Once you're high. You're past the micro. See what I'm saying? Way past right, right. Exactly. See, that's, Way that's, past that's, it. That's the thing. I'm, yeah. I'm always waiting. I'm waiting for the high. <laughs> There's no high. Not in a micro. I'm There's waiting, no high. Um, yeah. It's just a pain. That's your problem. Yeah. Your expectations. It's like, wait, you're doing micro. You're not supposed to see all the colors <laughs> and the trails and the melt <laughs> that we have come accustomed to in our lives of doing this dog. Bring it. The micro's <laughs> like just the, the, the body feeling and feeling good. Not, yeah. you, you're trying to trip. improve he brain function and things like that. See, that's know? the thing with Bobo. He's an extremist. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like he, he can't do stuff this small. He got to do it big. I'm with you, Bobo. I feel you sometimes. Sometimes I'm you just got to go all in. Yeah. All gas Bring or it. none. <laughs> there you go. I think I'm a bit more responsible with it now. A little I, bit. I don't think a, so. A little bit. Slightly. I mean, I don't do, I don't do it before like a show like the symphony show. I didn't, even though there may be a show that it might happen, but we have to do it as a band. Yeah, you're better as the- We would have to do it as a band like would, old school yeah, days. We would have to do it yeah. as a band. Yeah. There's no solo mission. No solo missions. <laughs>
<laughs> when I was saying you weren't better, I didn't mean like you were definitely better than that. When you were young, you would do it. You guys did it for the show. Right. But when you do it, you still do it. That's what I meant. That yeah. you're not any better at that. Right. Exactly. Right, right. It's, it's, it's I'm gonna do it. I'm going to do it. Yeah. Ty, have you done shows on mushrooms? Duh. Like melt? <laughs> no, but I'm, I'm talking melt, not like micro. Oh, like, uh, yeah. I did the truck. Like, I remember in Amsterdam. I did it. It was in Amsterdam. We did a show. Yeah, like a two day show. How did that feel to you? I was on the truffles, like the truffles. Yes. And that, it was, I cried on stage. I swear. (laughs) My man. Cut to the emotions. Yeah, like I literally, it was like happy tears though. Like, but like nobody could notice I was crying, but I was just like, Looked like I was sweating, but I was I was crying. All right, yeah, that's a good way to mask yeah, it. Yeah, like that, it was it was amazing. It was, it was an arena. Like I was it on feels the- good to like be locked in with these folks, even though they're they might not be mushrooming. You know, they might not be shrooming with you, but it's a crazy lock in, right? It's, a, it's locked in. It's locked in, and I don't know. I just you could just see the you just see see the energy in the room, like just the color. see people's auras. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Oh, right. oh man, we we were doing this one show in Canada where all of us take like probably just over an eighth of mushrooms before we went on. That's so far. And in the middle of the set, and it was probably what like a fifty minute set, Bobo, sixty yeah. minutes, something like that. Yeah. It was a quick set. And and at the halfway point, it starts hitting me. I don't know when it hit Bobo. It probably went through him faster because <laughs> he's playing congas, you know, so his blood is circulating faster than mine at this point. So he probably got hit before I did, but I know. I got hit halfway through and like normally I'm paying attention to see the crowd movement and the mosh pit and all that stuff and it was going in normal time you know like it normally does and then when it hit me when the wave just the the melt took hold I saw that thing going slow motion bro and I could see everybody like I felt like I could see everybody distinctly. Their faces, the faces they were making, I was just locked in (laughs) in a different way. But the mosh pit slowed down. Now, I know it wasn't slowed down, but in my (laughs) mind, that's what I was seeing, like it going in slow motion and then the trails of people. It's like an infinity loop. Probably. Yeah, it was like a whirlpool of people. <laughs> and then the trail starts happening of that whirlpool. That I was like, oh my God. I don't know how we wow. finished how this. Did you even, how did you even remember the lyrics? <laughs> we just keep, you know, like muscle memory. We just keep going. But in our minds, like, see, this is all happening as I'm doing the lyrics. I'm doing the lyrics and I'm seeing this crazy thing stuff happening and i just know that i can't stop because you know in the back of my mind is like if i stop the show gets it's over done you know what i mean (laughs) so i got to just keep with momentum so i think that's probably the only reason why we didn't stop ever and and like you know ruin this show with us like full-blown tripping up there (laughs) like tripping balls really you know (laughs) yeah i wouldn't do it today but back then, when we were more adventurous, hell yeah, I would have been like, whew, let's do it, Bobo. Yeah. Oh, man. You know, it was never a solo mission. Yeah, never you know, solo mission. It was It was always, it was the band, that was it. And, um, you know, it's better that way. We would just sometimes not tell our sound guy. <laughs> At all. Yeah, so he could just you trip. Tell nobody. Yeah, you tell nobody. So, right. so he could trip, because, like, sometimes, you know, like, when we were doing this a lot, we were doing our Temple of Boom album, and we would term every boom reference to Shroom. Uh, Welcome to the Temple of Shroom, and this and that and the other. That's fire. Yeah. That was our own little code words. We were, <coughs> we were tripping balls, so we, we knew what we were saying, but I know our sound guy was like, they're mentioning a lot of shrooms tonight. What the fuck? <laughs> what was your craziest, like, shroom trip on tour? Craziest shroom? I know his. We tell it all the time, but mine... um Damn. Bring it. I, it would probably have to be that that time in Canada just because, it, you know, like, I didn't think it, it was going to hit us that hard so fast. And it hit. And, you know, like, <laughs> there was, the, okay, so the part of the story is that, you know, Send Dog tripped out of because of a hat that got thrown on stage, yeah. right? <laughs> and he was very offended by this hat. And we all thought, because we couldn't see what the hat said or what the hat was, we're all in, you know, it's a mystery to us at this point. And we're like, what does the hat say? And he wouldn't show it to us, but he was mad that whole show. Like, he wanted to, like, beat 
the ass of the person who threw that hat on stage. And we're all tripping, you know, like, oh, my God, Sendok's tripping. And he's shrooming, too. Yeah. It's like reverse effect. It's supposed <laughs> to make you feel happy. But this thing. Once you get angry, it's Yeah, over. so we were like, no. this hat must be like some real offensive shit. So we're waiting, you know, and he's clutching the hat through the whole show. <laughs> he doesn't let it go. He doesn't throw it back. He's just holding it, pissed off. He says, who threw this hat? And this dude who thinks it's a part of the show waved his hand up and they, you know, force fed this guy to the front of the stage. They picked him up and they rolled his ass to the front. Everybody was kind of slapping him in the back of the head, you know, because <laughs> they noticed that Send Dog is highly offended, right? And uh, they take him up, and I look back at, at the DJ, like, start the song, you know, to try to defuse whatever was about to happen. And so we start playing Insane in the Brain, right? All right. And I do my thing, and I'm tripping. I'm looking back at Bobo, <laughs> like, trying to give him, like, I'm tripping right now face, right? And I'm seeing Sen still with the hat clutched, seething, and then the dude's right there in front of me. They finally roll this guy up. And Send Dog's rapping his whole verse in the guy's face, like nose to nose. Oh, he was getting serious. Oh, my God, man. Getting... Like the things that were going through my head at this point. <laughs> Wasn't even the guy who threw the hat up. In the end, he was like, oh, man, I, I love you guys. I thought that was a part of the show, but I didn't throw the hat. Wow. <laughs> oh, man. So Send Dog, at the end of the show, we're like all kind of like following behind him, and he's <laughs> and he's like still pissed off about the hat. He looks at this garbage can, he looks at the hat, and he throws it in there. And we pause out for like five, ten seconds to let him get ahead of us a little bit further because we want to see what the hell's on the hat. Oh. And we look at the hat, we take it out the trash, and it just says banana boat. And it's, it's a <laughs> tanning, you know, <laughs> tanning lotion <laughs> fucking hat. <laughs> and then, we, you know, because we're on shrooms, we figure out why why he thought it was offensive. He's Cuban. Yeah. <laughs> and that used to be an insult to a Cuban they still say it, yeah. person, you know, oh, you banana boat motherfucker. Yeah. But that's, you know, out of like 100 hats, that's the one he keyed in. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. And it wasn't true. meant at a, as an offense. It was just like a bunch of hats flying on stage. Oh, that was the hat that person Damn. had on. Yeah. yeah. He overthought that. For oh, sure. He, was, he, he was totally overthought it. Definitely, yeah, super I've deep. definitely been in one of those moments. So. Oh, yeah. I think we all overthink shit when we're, man, especially yeah. on shrooms. Yeah, we thought, oh. we thought it was like oh, something like They came major. in with the, yeah, you the got one. joints, man. Oh. Keep one right there, yeah. Oh, Keep that yeah. 10 milli. Oh, oh, shit. And it got a, a oh. back with it. Oh, there you go. Boom. Oh. That's, for the, that's just like the caviar right there. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> you get a joint. You get a joint. You get a joint. Oh, we make sure everybody right. stays lit. <laughs> yeah, but that was mine. How about you? Like, you, you ever you had a tripped out? <sighs> Not on stage. I never tripped out on stage, but I definitely had a bad trip. And this is, I was like younger. And that's when it was like, this is my first time doing shrooms. And I'm at this college party. I'm like 16 at this college party. And we, I'm already smoked up. You know, I had a few shots. And they bring in the shrooms. Oh, boy. Everybody right. had an eighth. I just took the whole eighth. To the, back, to the head? Oh, boy. First time. That's Damn. usually, yeah, first time to eighth to the head. Yeah, you're going to get that's there. That's what I did. First time. Same here. And yeah. Then, ah, like, I'm, like, it's like a kickback, like college party like kegs we chilling got a few chicks and you know all the homies we vibing hey arnold was playing on the on the on the screen i'm like i'm hitting i'm hitting the bong and i'm watching hey arnold low key and i'm like he says something so deep i'm like wait it was like a life lesson i'm like yo this is really a life lesson going on and hey arnold i never caught this ever in my life and i just like tripped out i just started tripping like my brain just went backwards. Like, I don't, wow. I don't know where I, what I seen. I end up going to the, the bathroom. I look in the mirror. Oh, worst thing you oh can do. Oh, my God, yeah. Oh, worst <laughs> thing you can In the do. melt, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> what you, oh, yeah, you don't want to do that. I looked yeah. in the mirror, and then <laughs> oh, no. I just, I think I seen my future. I was yeah. like, <laughs> <laughs> the mirror is your I was like, wow. in, my, in my eyes, I was seeing, like, I was like this, I was this new... <laughs> Celebrity, I, I thought I was already already made it in my head. I was seeing, I thought I met Kanye West in my head. Wow, like I was all over the place. That's like, not bad though. Like I was just like, 
it was just like future. It was like future. That's stuff. not a bad mirror experience. That's not a bad Actually, mirror okay. experience. I yeah. think people that have like, um, you know, some issues that they're dealing with. Yeah, they have trouble looking in the mirror. Fact. Mm. Yeah, because what's coming back at them is something they don't like. Mm-hmm. And until you deal with that, you shouldn't go full blown into the melt without people that know how to guide you through it. I think because yeah. like, man, that will cut you. That's why they tell people like, don't don't look in the mirror. Yeah, but you know what? Dude, <laughs> cut, those <laughs> things they cut you, but they fix you. They do fix you. Yeah, you, if you go <coughs> through it, but when you come out of it, you feel like a new human but, being. Well, it ended yeah. up happening. I actually had to go to boot camp the next morning, bro. So I'm like. <laughs> So I didn't, I didn't have to, I didn't sleep at all. Oh, like, man. So, like, I'm literally, I w- literally go home at, like, 6 o'clock in the morning to, like, put on some gym shorts and a tank top and some shoes to go straight to boot camp. Mm. Be hydrated boot- and everything. <laughs> no hydration. <laughs> Cotton mouth. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's why I tried to tell you. Nah, but that was the middle. best trip of my life because it, it, like, it showed me yeah. what energy was. Yeah. It showed me like what like like just how people like you can see the real in people, you can see the fake in people, you can yeah. see the evil. So yeah. it taught me a lot. The melt is real. Oh man. The portal is real. It, it's super yeah. real. It's yeah. super real. And the vibe that you get, like you said, like you know, when you're around a table of people and you could sort of sense someone's vibe if they're like, you know, a good positive person whatever or if they're one of the mischievous motherfuckers or if they're an evil person you could mm. totally vibe that out oh for sure that is it it, it unmasks a lot you can't like as much as you might try you can't be something else in front of people but what you are when you're on mushrooms if they're on mushrooms they could see you yeah that's the thing yeah, you can see you can see all different type of energies it's like mm-hmm. yeah. it, they, it used to like put me off about shrooms sometimes because you know like we'd be around our close circle of people and then every now and then you know other folks that weren't necessarily tripping with us or maybe weren't a part of our circle would come in and we'd be like i could sense <laughs> you know whether they were cool to be around or maybe they should you know certain folks shouldn't be around our shit. you know what i mean like it gives you that and at first you're you, you know like you're fighting against that because you don't want to be a dick but like it's 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 telling you something i i enjoy taking shrooms and going around big settings because it's just like i like i make myself feel uncomfortable on purpose like i want to like sense what's going around and around the <coughs> around the room around the like going to a festival like i usually after i perform i just walk into the the festival and go see other performances yeah. that I want to oh, yeah. I just go live life. Yeah. Move. I take shrooms and just see mad different people. You're like, yo, this is like we all connected in some type of way and we just don't even realize it. So I take shrooms spiritually for myself, like just oh. like to connect with more people and connect with the world, you know? That's a good thing, man. So some people can't even be on shrooms around people. Like they bring oh, yeah. out right. They gotta be in their own their own room or something and listen yeah. to music so i get it it's not for yeah some people isolate isolate and, and i always trip on that it's like you're better off seeing things you know like go out and and, and, and experiencing things and and you know doing shit to enhance your experience just being alone in a room that's you're just boxing yourself up that's what we did with the homies uh on for this like my new album like we went to joshua tree for like like a week and like finished up some of the album and i mean we all was just eating sh- we had we were making shroom tea and shroom like like mm. chocolate milk like ho- <laughs> like Every- chocolate uh like hot chocolate uh everything shroom yeah we had all different types of shrooms like wow. we were just smoking and shroomed out and just getting just lost in the stars like we put the studio like right it was like a dope ass house with like a like a garage I could see through and you could see like the whole like stars and shit. So <sighs> the stars out there yeah, and it just intense. crazy. They're, oh yeah. It's, it's There's crazy. no light to, to Yep. But, no, no. but being on shrooms with your homies and out in the middle of nowhere and creating music, that's just like the dope. That's the, dope. That's the vibe right there. That's where I, I tell a lot of like artists like, yo, just take some shrooms and get go somewhere far, bro. Go somewhere far and connect. Yeah. Like with Mother Nature. Go somewhere with it the, where there's no distractions for you no yeah. distractions that's the best. where's one place that you have like what's your favorite album like a place that you made your favorite album 
I'm going to say for Black Sunday, we, we made that album in New York. Mm-hmm. Like we did maybe the first week here. It created maybe two songs. We were in L.A., but, you know, Muggs wanted a different vibe and he didn't want any distractions. So, And, and he wanted to, to soak up the New York vibe. You know, be out there while people, other people were creating and seeing what the pulse was. You know what I mean? So, And that was a great time for me because growing up on the West Coast, listening to East Coast hip hop as we're coming up and, and being inspired and influenced at that time because, you know, we had KDAY back then, mm-hmm. um, the AM station that was popping off, you know, the mix show on Friday nights and hip hop in the rotation. We were familiar with a lot of New York hip hop. So, like, you know, we, some of us considered that the Mecca. That's even, dope. <laughs> even though we were from here, we considered it, you know, that's the Mecca. That's where hip hop is from. So to be out there, you know, where we thought was, you know, this that's is like where the prime <laughs> time, too. Like, yeah. That's the prime time when, like, music was just early here. 90s. And yeah, the yeah. 90s was just, and it's like half, you're like half punk rock and half hip hop. Like, it just like, yeah. He was in it. <laughs> yeah, it was that was a fun time. And then when we did the Psycho Realm album in um in Pennsylvania up in Conshohocken with Yeah, that was Joe one of my Butcher. favorites. Cause uh man, creatively just you know, when you're on a roll and you got there's a place you got two studios, you got both of them on lock, because we're moving in both sp- spots, because creatively everything was flowing and just an all around vibe, you know what I mean? When you're there with your homies, you know, making music, you know, nothing better. Was it the setting like in the middle of nowhere? Or was yeah, it, it was yeah. Uh, like in the sticks, bro. Like, yeah. <laughs> it was in the sticks. That's fire. Like, going up to, like, <clears throat> like, if you didn't live in the city, you moved up to the... The middle of nowhere. Up in the middle of nowhere, I, I, right? I respect that. So that's, that's where these guys went and put their studio, because Studio 4 was originally in Philadelphia in the city. Mm -hmm. you know like downtown and they decided you know once they kind of blew blew up they were going to take it out of that setting and build the studio they really wanted and the only place they could really do that was outside of the city because it's way too expensive to go buy this building and then like you know set it up the way you want to set it up so they found something closer to where they probably lived at this point which was upstate yeah upstate and uh you know, it's like in a, like like going in the forest, right? Yeah. Deep in the sticks. You can't leave, so you gotta stay there. Yeah. So we yeah we weren't gonna drive back to the city every night, so we just stood out out there. We like picked a hotel out there, and we just partied up there and and uh, made the album. It was pretty dope. That was a dope experience. That's fire. Yeah. That's super dope. I, I respect that, man. I'm just yeah. Those were the two. Like being out of California doing them. You know, because, like, here, we were just so focused, hyper-focused. We didn't really soak in anything because we're, like, totally entrenched in making music. But out there, we could soak up the vibe because we don't have all the everyday extractions, distractions happening while being home recording or coming to the studio late or any of that type of shit. You know, like, being totally locked in. But that's what made y'all super authentic. Oh yeah, like, and that's what brought that energy too, and that rage, and that like new that that new wave of energy that time, you know. Like, and the focus. The focus is probably a one too. Oh yeah, but that that's dope. That's it's just amazing to be on here. I'm just like able to ask oh, questions, all, you know. Oh, that's all love, man. Yeah. What were you gonna say, Cali? I was gonna ask you, um, did you record any of the original '91 album? Because I know you did videos there. So in New York, no. yeah. Just oh, the videos. Just the vid- gotcha. just the uh, just the two videos. Yeah. Which was uh Killing Man and Hand on the Palm. On the Palm. Yeah. Like I said, I know we've said it before, but back then especially a lot of people still thought they were from New York. Oh yeah. And yeah. those videos we all did. I thought you was from New York. So I thought y'all was from like New York for sure. I didn't yeah. know you was from the West Coast. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And literally I live like five miles from Cypress Hill Cemetery. So I'm like Cypress Hill, video is in the in Times Square and this from New York. You know? We did it we did listening. we did a few things out there though, like uh when we did the 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 video for Funk Dubious, the Wah Baba Luba video, that was in New York. So a lot of people were like always yeah. tying us up because we were always doing shit out there. So yep. you know that I mean that's where they accepted us first, actually. You know so. And your sound wasn't like a California sound. Yeah. It, it was like very very unique, which was very fitting to New York at that time. Everybody had like a lot of West Coast music was dope, 
but the second you heard the beat, you knew it was West Coast. You know, there were certain sounds in it that, okay, this is a yeah. West Coast song. Your songs were very, very... I, I think at that time there was, you know, if you were if you had gotten signed to a West Coast label, they expected you to sound something like N.W.A. Right. Something close. Or, or like, Snoop. Or like, no, like, Snoop uh, didn't exist then. Yeah. Um, was he 93? Yeah, 93. Right. Um, if, you know, like, they were looking for, like, an Ice Cube, N.W.A., uh, that type of vibe. And before them, it was like Tone Loke. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't sound like Tone Loke or something like that. Let's do it. In NWA, they weren't really getting down with you. <laughs> Tone, Tone Loke passed out on me on a on a jet blue flight to Miami. Like, oh, he did? Yeah, in like oh, the late 90s. And I was like, Loke, Loke. I'm like, my man, he was on my shoulder. I'm like, get up. He literally did. <laughs> oh, man. Damn. Loke. That's my man, bro. like, yeah. he made all the, 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 like, what you see Snoop Dogg doing, he he made all those moves like first tone low you know what i mean like dude and like from from doing voiceovers to to movies and all that yeah, stuff yeah, and like, yeah, yeah like Ace Ventura. like him and, and snoop have had a similar trajectory only snoop you know he did it on on a way bigger level i think oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. i think because you know the things that were available to snoop man yeah aren't worse on some different shit but True. yeah, Tone Loke was like the first. The first he did his music was different than Snoop's, obviously. But but it was it was West Coast. Huge. It was West huge, Coast rap, yeah, and it was. it was West Coast, and he had hits. Uh, it, it appealed to uh, a lot of people. I oh mean, yeah, all all across the board. Oh yeah, Wild Thing and Funky Cold Medina. You couldn't get away from those songs yeah. over Funky here. Cold Medina. <laughs> That shit was crazy on the radio there. I mean, he was in rotation. Him and Young MC and... and MC. Sure. Sure. And that was back then when you would back do then, those, yeah. like, the college tours to really... Because college oh, yeah. radio was bumping your stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, do shows at the colleges. I remember exactly. going to my sister. She went to New Paltz, upstate New York. I seen, um, what's this called? Uh, Biz Marquee, Tribe. Like, so many big, big... Hip hop groups. That's how like Diggy Diggy's College, college too, right? Oh yeah, yeah we all yeah. did. All of us yeah, had to do college first before we did anything. It was so dope. You got to see like literally the best. That was people probably the real. College. That was probably the real deal. Yeah, oh yeah, because because oh, yeah. if if college, <clears throat> yeah. you know, if the college fans got you know snapped onto you, <laughs> you were winning because yeah, it the, all the goes from there. But they stopped doing that shit for yeah, artists. Yeah. Like they're, they're bringing them on, it, they're bringing it back. It's like there. I yeah. do some college shows. Yeah. You need to. I think. I think every artist needs to like get that circuit first. It's like that's the the, the testing ground. If they they get on to you, psh, you got some. The college shows are. I love that. I love them. I Energy's love those. Wild, that's the man. energy. Yeah. Like they they show love and it's just like it just they they don't they just want they want to party all day. Oh yeah. Like that's. Oh yeah. Those are some of the best shows. The, the best shows. Yeah. I did one in Minnesota not too long ago. And it was like fifteen thousand kids. Like Dope. it was just me. God damn. No, they it was just they knew every song word for word. And like to the point, I just go to Minnesota now. Like yeah, I'm always in Minnesota because you, you can now because you <laughs> built yeah. from that. It's just like you hear that Bolton. Hear that Bolton? Yeah, yeah. 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 that is in your backyard. Uh, Bolton. Oh yeah, that's Bolton's neighborhood. Yeah, he he loves he, he's from Minnesota. You gotta so, let me know next time. I'll fly out. You know, he's from the soda. He's from the soda. <laughs> he's from the. He's a Minnesotan. <laughs> yeah. Yep. He's a minute. Minnesota. You betcha. You betcha. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you know? <laughs> no. So you, you, know. you get you getting off to the studio after this? Uh, I'm probably my album drops in four days, so we working. So you guys are working. You guys yeah, are yeah, promoting. Doing, I'm doing everything that uh content. I'm shooting content right now. We're about to drop the track list today. And I'm just super excited. I've been working on this album for four years. So it's like wow. scrapping it and like going back and figuring it out like i just wanted to really make some music that i want to hear for the next 30 40 years from my peers you know so i had to really find myself how many times did you scrap it before you like caught on to the vibe that you wanted like three three Damn. Yeah, three times. Wow. how many how many um how many songs did you get done each time you scrapped it a full full album full album we have so many songs wow. like like <laughs> We respect take them out and then put some new record some new music like structure right it's like 
the way we structured it, like I structured this album is like I went through, I actually had to go through the things that I'm like talking about that I'm talking about, right. you know, mm. like I had to put all these different perceptions of my life and the cultures that I've been around. I was in India for like a month. Uh, I was in Thailand. I was just getting so like being on the road, just like getting so many different cultures. Yeah, experiencing like, all those experiences. Yeah, yeah. So like, yeah. I, and then being in a relationship, like breaking Which, up, like breaking up, going through a breakup and shit, and like putting that into the music and just everything, man. It's like this whole struggle, pain, and bringing music back to. Like this real substance feeling yeah real feelings you know and that's what i'm putting people through is like a wave and like give them a, a mix of everything every genre that i i want to accomplish you know that's what it's about man i mean when you've had so many years of songs with no substance man it's it's good to hear you know someone focusing on that yeah man I, and it's the energy too that i want to put it like i want to make people happy again i want to make people like feel something like yeah like i don't want you to like listen to some music and feel sad today i want you to like be able to wake up in the morning like y'all want to listen to this song i want to listen to this when i'm in the car like everything has its moment you know oh yeah so, so it's just focusing and putting like really strategizing myself into like doing what i want you know when when you scrapped the first two, were your people's thinking, "Yo, what the fuck"? Now or we, did or did they agree with you? Now we all agreed, you know. Oh, that's like, good. Like we, yeah. like me and my team, we all like we are in this for real, and like that's dope. We want we want like real like we wanted to make a real classic. Well, know? what did you feel was wrong with the ones that you scrapped? Um, I mean, what was the key thing that, that made you say, "You know what, we can do this again"? It was just I felt like it could be better. Like, I, I felt like it was like, it was just, it felt rushed, you know? Like, I don't want to, I didn't want to rush my, my, my magic. I didn't want to rush my art. It's like rushing a painting, you know? Like, you have yeah. to take your time on it, you know? Like, I'm going to get back to it when it's the, the moment's right. So, like, a lot of the music, like, I feel like it was, it was amazing music that'll come out still one day. But I was like, yo, it's, we need, so, it needs a, we need to see something else. Yeah. Right. To, like, so you did different songs. Yeah. yeah. So it was a whole different like album, like project. Yeah, I switched it up. Like I like oh, wow. I really switched it up and went like this is like really it's a different sound that people are not gonna be used to. Or that you're gonna be used to. A lot of people love it. They've been getting a lot of good reactions on it. And um it's just something that I'm I, I love like music, like I love popular music. So it's like I wanna make songs that people can yeah, like your kids, kids, kids can listen to, you know, like and I really study music so much, and like, I feel like this is something that people are gonna love, you know? Yeah, I respect right. that you don't just put things out. There's a lot of artists that'll just keep putting out music for the sake of putting out music, and, and it don't have to, you know? Yeah. Sometimes less is more. Yeah. You ain't gotta just put it out to put it out. Make sure it's something you believe in. And yeah. You think your fans are gonna connect with, not just to be like, oh, I put a, dropped another album. Yeah, you dropped four and they're all whack, you know? Like, I know people keep bragging, like, I got another one, another one. I'm like, yo, slow down. <laughs> you had one good track mm -hmm. tops on each album. You should have taken them all and made one album. Yeah, you can't oversaturate Absolutely. just for the sake of, oh, I got to put this shit out. But because people have the ability to do it, they do it. Yeah. You see a lot I, of people pushing out. There was another band just recently that said they, they scrapped the full album and started over again. I can't remember what Pretty. band it was. Do you remember? Mm. It was, it was, mm. Who was it? It was, it was like an alternative band. Yeah. can't remember who the hell it was. But, I mean, it's for the sake of, like, I could do better. And if you tell yourself that and you be 1,000 with yourself, yeah, man, um, you could, pe people, yeah, they may want you in the moments that they want you, but if you, you do something significant, they're coming to it yeah. regardless. Yeah. yeah, and, you know, it, it's, it's tough because, you know, like all the statistics and everybody's on that analytics <coughs> stuff and the algorithm, all this, like people are losing, losing the music to the numbers game right, right now. like yeah. you know diddy started that <laughs> uh, you know like all respect due to the homie but like when he started mentioning what the triangle the 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 circle and the pyramid were on the top 200 charts that no fan gave two shits about you know like if you ain't getting gold meaning that circle or the pyramid if you ain't getting none of that you ain't doing shit and then fans start looking at that and they see artists not with the bullet the circle around the number 
not with the circle around there, like the full blown circle or the the dot or whatever that that means gold and platinum and all that. If you didn't have that, you weren't popping and all the rest now with the algorithms and the analytics and all that stuff, TikTok, so it all stemmed <laughs> from that shit right there because like fans didn't used to give a shit about the numbers of what an artist did. Sure. They liked them because of the vibe. Mm -hmm. Because and some of the best artists, especially back then, weren't hitting charts. Yeah. They were fire and they were under yeah. more underground. You look at a lot of New York rappers that were fire back then. Yeah. They never hit charts. No, you didn't when see Immortal Technique and people. Did he like weaponize this. that yeah, as competition to others? Yeah. yeah. Like, you ain't fucking with us because we're moving units. Look at our shit. It's got, you know, if it ain't got this and that, which ours does, it ain't popping. And and it it ha it held you to another standard now. Like everybody had the pressure of like I got to get that at least a gold record, right? Yeah, that's, that's really Bring it. Right? Because it didn't used to be like that. It was just like let's do let's just do some great music and do it. It does what it does. So some of the classics in hip hop ain't even, like didn't even chart like that. That's not even close. And but a good, a good sale, yeah. what a good sale would be, what, 200,000? And now motherfuckers got to look at how many streams you got, how many units you sold, how many this and how many that. And wow. Instead of just vibing off the music because it's good. Hey, I just want to see my fans have fun, bro, like, and get some good music. Oh, so yeah. it's like, I'm just about just putting this music out and uh, letting y'all get a good tune, man. That's right. That's it, bro. Yeah. That's what we need to start focusing on is this music and yeah. the shows. Yeah. The shows the are amazing. quality of the show. You. Mm -hmm. Some I people put on terrible shows, man, and give work on your craft, man. Yeah. Be ready when you go out oh. there. Some people just ain't ready. You got you to gotta work. Yeah. You got to yeah. work on that. Yeah, work you guys on. put a ton of work into your shows. That's why they come out good. No, it's not luck. Turn that frown upside down. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Good vibes. You know what I'm saying? Good vibes. Word up. I know we're working with limited time with you, so let's. Uh, we got any questions from the asylum? Yeah, we got a few. All right, pop it off. Um, first one in here, we got Midget Mike saying, Yo, Ty, any wild stories making heart full of rage? And how was it working with Chad Hugo? Oh, shit. Hey, that's dope. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, we got, yeah, our fans be asking good questions. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, well, the craziest moment working on Heart Full of Rage, huh? I don't know. I don't really have no crazy studio sessions, to be honest. Like, I just, I really, like... Keep them mellow and yeah, focused. Yeah, I kept it, like, really focused, and I was really, like, making my art and uh, really serious about it. But, nah, we just, we always have good vibes, though. Like, like I got my homie Lucian always in the studio, my boy Denny, my manager, and Jake, and we always have good vibes and all around it, so... As aside from weed and shrooms, right, you got any other shit in the studio, like, like I see, like in some studios, they be having like healing crystals and sage and and cocaine. like certain candles and <laughs> shit like this. And cocaine. I mean, cocaine too. <laughs> it works, man. I, 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 it's, it's a fact, bro. I, you you didn't not. know where I was going, and then <laughs> you're not yelling. wrong. <laughs> but that is a part of the, some ambiance. Never been a part of our session. No, but hey, I'm yeah, saying, you know, but it is part session, of the music. But I've seen them. I've seen those sessions before. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah especially yeah. in the rock world. <laughs> Oh, yeah. The rock world, yeah. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, the, only, the drums only only the only thing in high BPMs. <laughs> so is the heart rates. Oh, oh, oh. I get down when I see the crystals because I know that there's an energy when those things are. Yeah. Around, you know what I'm saying? So I keep the crystals in the crib. You know. Yeah. yeah, same here. I got I got some for the crib, but there's like certain <laughs> ones in here specifically for the building. That's, yeah, that's good. Cool. Got to have it. Got to energy. All right, Rolling. what else you got? And we got Dab Oopster up in here asking, Yo, Ty, how are you writing your songs? Are you freestyling or you hold on to your lyrics? Um, I start off with a melody and like I structure the whole song off a of melody. Like I, I, I structure the hook, the verse, hook, verse, maybe a bridge, all off the melody. And then I can, I pretty much like foretell the lyrics in there and I can hear where like I'm going and I'll just fill in the fill in the blanks you know yeah and then I'll have like a couple homies like my boy Lucian he he's always helping me out like we always go back and forth and like we just go back and forth that's back and dope forth. when you got someone you can bounce out yeah like ideas off of he's always he's always there you know and he engineers too so I just always like always I freestyle a lot of my music and sometimes I'll like write it in my phone 
It just yeah. depends. Like, it just comes out right. Yeah, right I don't think there. there's any one way. You yeah, know, it's whatever the vibe is in the moment. Whatever right? the vibe is in the moment, I'll probably come. I, I on this album, like I literally, my producer was like playing the beat in the kitchen, and I literally came up with the whole the whole hook in my kitchen, and then just went to the studio that same day and we recorded it. You hmm. know, like Yo. so it's just it's just the moment. Yeah, it's whatever it is. Awesome. Awesome. Are there any producers that you that you'd like to work with? Like just you would like, you know, like Alchemist or Madlib. Definitely. Or... Definitely Alchemist would be fire. Um I definitely Mike Dean. I want to work with Mike Dean. Ooh. Salute to Mike Dean. He's one of the greats. Yeah, 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 I definitely want to work dope. with Mike Dean. Um who else I want to I want to work with Wonder Girl. I haven't worked with her yet. Yo. There's a lot of I like working with new new producers and like finding new producers from all over, you know. Oh, yeah. Like giving people a chance, yeah. You know? So there's a lot of lot of talented, a lot of young talent. cats out there. A lot of women and women <laughs> knocking it down. Hell yeah! It's what crazy because they're doing it out. They're doing every. All these kids are just doing it in their room, right? Yeah, now. making yeah. hits in their room. <laughs> like, easy peasy. Easy peasy. <laughs> they don't have to leave. Yup. Now we got CMP up in here asking, "How old are you now? And how old were you when you first started rapping?" Uh, I'm 28 years old now. I just turned 28 in May. Um, when Happy I started, belated. When I, uh, when I started rapping, it was like, when I'm making music, I've been making, I've been singing my whole life. My, my sister was in a, a, a girl band, so I got to like be around her while she was in the studio doing shows. And this is the time when Orlando was making dope groups and stuff. You got like, to see it early. Yeah, I got to see it early. So um, I'm gonna say really started making music like 13. That's, that's a good made, age, that's man. That's when I made oh. my first song. You're absorbing still at that yeah. point. Yeah, I was oh, yeah. still absorbing and finding myself. That's good, man. And we got Midget Mike up in here asking, yo, Ty, what movie did your parents let you see way too young? Good question. Ooh, wow. Whoa, wow. that's a dope-ass question. Uh, Midget Mike. Hey, shout out to Midget Mike, man. He's a big motherfucker. He's dude. a big motherfucker, right? <laughs> <laughs> huge, huge. Mike. Huge. Hey, so... Uh, Damn, what was a crazy movie? Maybe Belly. Belly. Oh yeah, yeah that's yeah, Belly. Pretty crazy. Like, that's, that's pretty. It's like, a violent movie. That's a very violent movie, you know. <laughs> Mine was shot. The Exorcist. <laughs> the Exorcist. Oh, like, what oh, the fuck is this? this. Polter guys, yeah. Uh, what's another one? Um, let me think. Um, Belly had a dope yeah, intro. The, though. Yeah, Belly's intro was insane. The intro was when I found, when I found it. I found it. It was on. A, it was just VHS too. Like it didn't even have like the. It just said Belly. I'm like, what the hell? It didn't say Belly. I put it in. Ready for the ready. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm like, it was, that, it was legendary. Was How about you, Bobo? What, what did your What did your mom let you see too early for your young ass eyes, Bobo? You know, I think I would have. Debbie to does say, Dallas. No, I found, <laughs> I found some of those things on my own. Uh, no assistance. Uh, I think The Omen. The Omen. Ooh. Yeah, why, why do our parents ooh. in yeah. our generation, yeah. the first thing they let us see? <laughs> scary movie. It's and a, you a know scary what? goddamn movie. I was allowed to watch any movie as a yeah. kid. The only thing my parents tried was if it was really sexually explicit when I was young. Yeah. They tried to, you know, hey, no, don't watch this. But if it was scary or violent, they would oh, allow you to watch 100%. it. One hundred percent. They would actually like, give your ass yeah. nightmares. Exactly. <laughs> like yeah. watch shit yourself. Watch anything. Pretty yep. much. Yeah. We had yeah. a lot of movies in the house. So yeah, for us it was horror movies. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think movies. Amityville Horror. The, like that. <laughs> oh my god. That what and a, like what? watching uh, Exorcist. What was going on with our parents, man? Right? Right? Like. <laughs> to, See, my mom. My mom kept me away from Exorcist. Here, watch this. <laughs> she did you a favor, bro. Yeah, she did you a favor. Exorcist. I. I, seen it I only I saw that in high school for a high mm, school class. Okay. It was like we're gonna watch The Exorcist. <laughs> no, what? See the way. See it wasn't. Wow, it wasn't wow. through that's, my parents. That's dark. It wasn't through my parents. <laughs> see for me, I was at my aunt's house and my cousins were like, you know, they had a few years on me. So when my other younger cousins and I were kicking it with our older cousins, and they decided they were gonna put us on to this movie, bro, because they were all in there, you know. They were all much older, and they were watching The Exorcist, and me and my other cousin, who was younger than me, were flipping out yep. Whoa. watching this crazy shit. Yeah, I've seen it at about six or seven. It was terrible. Yeah. Oh, man. That one and Poltergeist got me, too. I saw that. Yeah. Poltergeist was good. Yeah, yeah, Poltergeist is a good one, too. Yep. 
you know, yeah. when uh, Exorcist came out with the, like the uh, added footage. Oh yeah. When the back, uh, the backward spider walk that wasn't like in. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's like, oh yeah. I mean. I mean that scared the shit out of you, Dad. Yeah. I'm like, whoa, yeah, <laughs> that was a heavy duty. That's heavy movie, duty. I couldn't watch. I couldn't watch him fully. I, yeah, I, no. I, I, I never watched the full movie. Yeah, I, I ended up watching the full movie eventually. Yeah, but like, yeah, it's not a movie I I, I will yeah. watch again because you know I just don't. I was the only one that was jumping into class like yeah. when we were watching Exorcist. I, Everybody had seen it. And I'm like, oh, I was the only yeah. one in there. Like it was kind of embarrassing. Dude, the Shining as well. Yeah, the Shining. The Shining it was a, yeah. that was That's good. A, yeah, it was good. But as a like you know, six seven year old, you're like, Rosemary's Baby it's, was creepy. It, that was just that, creepy. That was more like the Shining was more like the 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 freak out of homeboy. Right. Yeah. And like yeah, the you, the imagery of the two girls and all that stuff. You watch but, him yeah. go crazy. Yeah. Suspense. All right, what what else you got? In the last one, we got Florida Nick up in here saying Ty seems so cool to shroom with. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Next time you come back, we got a microdose, my. Oh yeah, yeah, that's that's on that's on the lock. I'm already on. All right, we all right, we're gonna do that. Yeah. All right, I want to get a hot box, man. We're oh, bringing that oh hot we gotta box. do that. All right, yeah. next time you're back in town, we're gonna make that happen. I live out here, so there's. Oh shit. Nothing. Okay. okay. You out here oh, now? Man. That's right. It is. That's right. You're out here now. I've been out here for like seven and a half years. Okay, we're gonna knock that down. Yeah, yeah. let's get that. We're going to schedule that up. We'll be back. That's right. Hey, I want to thank you, Ty, for um, jumping in and snapping in with us. Oh, man. Thank you for having me. We appreciate you. And, uh, you know, congratulations on everything. Yeah, August 4th. Make sure you all pre save the album right now, Heart Full of Rage 2. It's everywhere, all DSPs, August 4th. Make sure you get it. That's right. Hey, congrats, man. You got any shout outs you want to give before we go? Hey, shout out to all my friends, my family. Shout out to Epic. Shout out to my manager, Tess. Shout out to Denny. Shout out to Lucian. Shout out to Caesar. Shout out to Jake Toll. Shout out to everybody that was part of this album. And shout out to y'all for being here for real, man. Word up. Shout Word out man. to you, man. Hell we'll yeah. be back with more Dr. Green Thumb show right after this. What's up, it's the Chicken Hawk, Mac 10. About to do smoke box with the homeboy B Real. B Real TV, homie. What up, Minus? I do too. Happy birthday. It's Happy birthday, brother. What up, what up? Shit. <laughs> like that. Serious <laughs> <laughs> business. Yeah, yeah. Man, Bolton Blombo is a fan <laughs> over there. That's why he's bleeding over there. What's up, man? We about to get it in, my man Mac 10 up in here. Smoke box. All right, guys, one more time. Make sure your phones are all inside of these. Three, two, one. Welcome to another adventure in the smoke box for Be Real TV. I'm Dr. Green Thumb, aka Be Real, the funky feel one. Today in the box with me, joining me uh, here is DJ C Minus. Cali Blaze and the legendary Mac 10 up in this motherfucker right here, What's man. Up with him? It's, yeah. it's, it's good to have you up in here finally. You know, uh, you're someone that I've always had love for, you know, even, you know, through our rocky times and stuff like that. I always had mad respect. And, you know, when we when we cleared all that up and got down with each other, man, that was everything. And I had to I have to thank you for or you know, um, the thicker than water play right there um, right. that y'all invited me to get down on. Right, right. And that's when I still had my hair. It looked lush. Yeah, yeah, You're making yeah, me jealous yeah. right now and shit. Man, it ain't nothing. It's going to right back. <laughs> oh, man, it would take me forever. <laughs> it, is a, it is a long process. I saw it blown out the other day. I was like, damn, I should never have cut my shit. You had your shit major blown out. Yeah, man, I had to do it. I know you did. I had to do it. Hey, man, you look good. And I got to say, man, congratulations on everything because, like, your hustle game is is second to none. Like, you know, from the day you came up um, to, to where you are at now, still keeping it moving, man. And that's that takes a lot of, lot of heart and a lot of passion and, and hustle. I appreciate it, man. I really appreciate it. Shit, you right, though. You know what I'm saying? You got to stay focused and get it. That's right. 
Yeah. You know, I think when you have the passion and the love for, for the things that you do, and like music was definitely one of them, you know, not only did you, you know, put out hit records and shit like that, you also got into the, the, the promotion game, like throwing shows. Yeah. Right? That's like my bread and butter, really. You know what I'm saying? That's what I do. I wake up every single day putting a show together, yeah. or putting a few shows together. You know what I'm saying? That's that's really what I do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's my lane. I you know I have a lot of fun doing. And I gotta say, I played a couple of them shows. Yeah, for sure. You, you booked me on a couple for of them, sure. and for I was sure. like, oh yeah. shit, Mac yeah. got this one. And, yeah, yeah. And, and they were <laughs> they, hey man, they were fun. Yeah. Like you had like a nice like it was a dope bill. Sorry about that. We got a bunch of submissions in today. Don't know why the transition button isn't working properly. Oh, oh, Sorry about that, B. All right. It happened. I. Boom. We're back. All right. We got our boy Scott up in here from Alaska. He's trying to make some homemade pretzels. Bring it. There's the dough. And boil it. But don't call me dough boy. Whoa. All right. He's saying he likes to put cinnamon and butter and sugar on these. That's good. It's a good mix. Made a little pretzel dog as well. Look at that. Bane? Yeah, no. You got to put something in there. A little it's onion? Like, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> That's it? Dry? With onion? <laughs> yeah. That's raw dog in it. Literally. I mean, <laughs> literally raw dog. <laughs> at least a little bit of mayo. Damn. Or something. mustard. Or Ketchup. Something. Raw Damn. dog. He's <laughs> keeping them dog. calories low, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. That's no boy, man. <laughs> He's raw dogging for sure. Right? Thick, thick ass bun. We got a patchy girl up in here saying she made some chocolate chip cookies with homemade can of butter. Ooh. Oh, that's right. They look okay. good. They do look good. Like like Colton, are those a little bit bigger than Colton? They look slightly crispy and moist at the same time. Mm -hmm. Damn. And those are sure. the bestest. Yep. The crunchy end and Crunch, yes. crunchy and moist, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I was planning on uh, making some of those tomorrow for you guys. Infused or not infused? <laughs> infused. Oh, man. Oh, oh, boy. Why? Only way. Good. He said the only way. <laughs> <laughs> and we got Dean Jones up in here with a little bit of meatloaf. All right. All right. I make a mean meatloaf. Oh, okay. With the trombs on the top. Mm. Not bad. I put, Delish. I put hard boiled eggs in the middle of the meatloaf. So every time you That's, cut it, you got to slice it's it. It's a very dialed in portion. I mean, he's got his, his protein in the loaf. My man and Dean's losing weight. And he's got and he's got the broccoli and um cauliflower. and the cauliflower. cauliflower right chair. Is it the same? It's all good meat, stuff. Though? Yeah. Yes. He just put uh he's onions diet. and sauce on it. That's yeah. that's you know, those are good portions depending on your size. If you're a little bit taller, you might need just a little bit more of both, but He's trying to lose weight. But so he's, he's trying to get, good. he's trying to break that off. Good job, man. Yep. Good work. And it looks <laughs> and it looks delicious. <laughs> nice job, Tom. <laughs> Yo, what's up with this hard boiled egg in the meatloaf, Cali? It's yeah. delicious, bro. I'll what send you mean? a picture. So I put them in the middle, like because I make it and I like wrap it. So when you yeah. cut it, you get it there's it's right in the center. So there's meat and then the egg in the middle. It's phenomenal. Trust yeah. me. I've hard seen that. I haven't delicious. tried it, but I've seen it's it. It's good, man. Brajou. Yeah, that's not brajol. That's, that's pine nuts rolled in mm. pinoles. Bobo's still trying to wrap his head around that. <laughs> <laughs> Next one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I saw this the other day on Reddit. Have you guys ever heard of the Elvis sandwich? No. no. Well, apparently. Oh wait, Elvis, yes, yeah. it's peanut butter and jelly and bacon. Uh, bacon. A shit ton of bacon. Yeah. Oh! 
Oh, wow. my God. I would try it. Yeah, I'd try it because I like all those things. Yeah. Yeah, he used to do peanut butter. It, it savory was sweet. Yep. Yeah. Look at that. And he used mm, to add bananas that's in his peanut butter. That's the one. Yeah, it's, it's, it's this one, actually. Yeah, that's the actual. Peanut butter, jelly, bananas, and bacon. That's what. Peanut butter, banana, and bacon. Yeah. Peanut butter, jelly, banana, bacon. Damn, look at that. It looks so good, though. Oh, peanut butter <laughs> and jelly, banana, and bacon. Peanut butter, jelly, banana, bacon. Dude, say yeah, say that. that fast. <laughs> Thank you. That's a chorus. That's punk rock. That's uh, let's let's call Les Claypool. That's a chorus <laughs> for him <laughs> right there. <laughs> Peanut butter jelly bacon. <laughs> Peanut butter jelly bacon. Where's the race, where's the race car driver? <laughs> <laughs> and we got Justin up in here with a little breakfast sandwich, saying he's got steak on here, cheese, scrambled eggs, and on a blueberry bagel. Okay. okay. Bagel. A bagel. 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 What was that? Bagel? A bagel. A bagel. Bagel. She said it from a bagel. bagel. <laughs> What's that at the bottom? Is that an egg? Cheese? No, it's cheese. That's cheese. plus. Okay. Oh, That's well, it's the cheese. Okay, got it. That's too way too thin to be an egg, baby. Provolone. Provies. Look at that. Look at the hash brown. Provolone. Oh. That hash brown looks good. Would you guys do it on a blueberry bagel or not? No. No? No. no. But hey, everybody has yep. their own choice. It's the plain bagel. You would do it? Uh, totally. Yeah, plain bagel. Toots. Everything. Um, we'll do it. And let's see. Next up in here, we got Rick up in here. He was catching your guys' autographs outside of the concert. And he's saying, thank you guys so much, and I appreciate it. I'm 81, so I'm a little bit, you know, behind the shit. <laughs> yeah, that was after, um, what was that after? Thanks, Denver? <laughs> Was that Denver, Bobo? Uh, I think so. Wait, wait, what was I wearing? Let's see. Boop, boop, boop. No, that was... Uh... Want to raise? I don't remember where that was. <laughs> you know what? Actually, that could be uh, San Diego. That's San Diego, yeah. That was a, a gate. That was right there. Yeah. Word up. Salute. Thanks for coming, bro. Hell yeah. What do you think of the signature, Bobo? That's top notch. <laughs> well done. Pretty you know, Sorry. Yeah, it's it's all there. That one's all there. Right Looks on. good. Outstanding. Give props. It's all there. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, there's he. What do you mean? Uh, uh, right there. It's right there. Fuck out of here. Uh, you know, there. What about on the next one? Pedal down. It's right there. Yep. Bam. Don't even front. Uh, it's just uh, the choice of the color. Uh, it's a really good one. Uh, Excellent. Okay, 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 hold up, hold up. Oh These ones God. I did on purpose in front of Bobo. <laughs> How about that? No. Yes, I did. I said, look at this, Bobo. Look at that. <laughs> God this, is damn. this is what we do sometimes. <laughs> you know. If I want to fuck with Bobo, this is what I do right in front of him here. Look at this. Right. Brr. Yeah. Brr. But then the person <laughs> then, then the person that gets this, they look like, well, what the fuck is this? No, that's one of his signatures. Yeah. Hey, that's worth it. more money than the ones with the E and the A. It's more rare. <laughs> it's sure, more rare. Man. Yeah. <laughs> more rare. It's like a <laughs> stink. It's more rare. Still real. More that's rare. Rare. Rural. Rural. Got that be real. Fucking scrutinizers. <laughs> you say, man, I got that be real uh, autograph, but scrutinizers. But I got that, that be real. No, you got the be real. It's worth more. Oh, that it's worth real. more. That's, that, that's right. It's a distinct and, <laughs> and rare signature. Be real now. Nah, you don't Instead want Instead of this. that, just straight up B O B O every time. Hey. CH. Well, there it is. <laughs> yep. Sometimes a CH with it. Sometimes it all depends, and it all depends on if you get a year, you might get that. Yeah. So it all changes up. Depends yeah. how many you have to do that day. You know, that's it. When I start just putting Bo, that's, you know. Yeah, that, come on, Bo. That's it. B-O. B-O. B -O. <laughs> Damn, what happened? What's this? <laughs> he got lazy, man. <laughs> Bob. <laughs> Bo. All right. We got Big D from SD saying San Diego was a great show to eat mushrooms at. I was in the portal the whole time. All right. Oh, nice. He's in the portal. I'm nice glad this it, it was a perfect venue for mushrooms. Shroom worthy show. It was so you were comfortable. You had a breeze. You had Beautiful. good music. Yeah, that was perfect. You had plenty to see. 
Looks beautiful. I think the visuals on our screens too were pretty cool. If you if you were up in the front rows and you got to see the the screens while well, some of the things morphed and you were like on shrooms, you thought that was the coolest shit ever. Awesome. Because how many times were, you know when you're mushrooms when you're on shrooms and you're seeing some like an animation <laughs> something and it morphs into something you're like whoa. Wow. Any other time you'd see it, you'd just be like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. But like when you're shrooming, pff, it's it hits way different, obviously. Poor left was all right. Yeah, the poor laughter was cool. Hit kind of late again, but it was it just you know, right. You know when it it hit when uh, we got stuck in the van, we were stuck there. For <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I didn't realize it hit us in the van. <laughs> it hit us in the it van. It hit us in the van. <laughs> I'm like wow. We start laughing for no goddamn reason. <laughs> it's just like oh shit, this is funny. It must be it just hit. Yeah, we were not moving at all. Like, what, what's going on? Why are you doing this? Funny. Yeah. And then, Blaze, you want to talk about this submission? Yes, please. Shout out to my little man. Just got a job as an internet hey, sales hey. manager. Hey, yeah. congrats. You have one with the numbers on it? Yeah, go hey, back there. Just check it out. So he's got, there's a new Toyotas, Hondas, GMC, Chevy, uh, Chrysler, Ram, Dodge, all. It's all at Moss Brothers. And if anybody goes and buys a car from him, I'll add two fifty dollars to your down payment. What? So how about that? You go check him out over at Moss Brothers. There's his info. If you buy a car, I'll put an extra two fifty dollars on your down payment. Damn. Oh, just to support damn. my family. Absolutely. My mom just got a new car. should have sent her You're your way. damn right you should have. And they got hundreds of used cars, too, by the way. So if you don't want new, they got hundreds and hundreds. Do and trade-ins? he'll hook you up. Trade-ins. If you got bad credit, he'll take care of you with bad credit. Like, no matter what, just... Bring a down payment, they'll get you in a car. Bring for it. Sure. Boom, bang. Good job, kiddo. Damn, that's tight. Well, well done. I'm working with that 350 FICA. Gold. Word. He said, I'm working with a 350. <laughs> he said, he's, I got that FICA. <laughs> you got that bicycle FICA. credit, homie. Yeah. You mother FICA. That's bicycle credit. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> See, Mr. looks at me like, uh. <laughs> All right. He's like, twat. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here we go. <laughs> all right. And then you guys see people complaining about how bright the new Twitter X logo is? Yes, I heard about yeah. that yeah. today. That would disturb the shit out of me if I lived across the street. <laughs> oh, wait, that's outside? Street. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my God. I'd be so... That's like the Seinfeld episode this with trying to put up the Rogers. bat yeah. signal on himself. That's yeah. crazy, bro. It is kind of dope. <laughs> it's just very loud. Word. Imagine you trying to sleep. Okay, oh, man, that's... That would pop people off into epileptic yeah, seizures. Yeah, epileptic seizures. You're doing for too sure. much. If you're light sensitive, you know what I mean? Oh, that, yeah, that would kill me. I could not live there. Come on, Elon. I'd have to move. Elon. <laughs> because Come of Elon. On, Elon. Apparently, Elon. you know, a couple of our our songs got flagged on our account on this X platform. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, on our own goddamn platform, like, on our account. We put up a song, a Cypress Hill song with, I guess, some video, whatever. And they restricted the song. Like, this is the first time Crazy. they've done that. So, you know, I guess they're applying new rules or something, but like, <laughs> come, on. come on, Elon. Come on, Elon. 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 I mean, but yeah, that, that sign is great. So, really, it's like no longer, it's, tw it's no longer Twitter. No. It's a straight X. It's X. X. But you retweet and all that stuff, all that lingo. You've been thing. X'd. <laughs> you got X. <laughs> what, yeah, what do they call that now? Just yeah. a repost? We we they re just generalized it to a repost. Weak. Yeah, Rex. it's just repost. Weak. When you look at it on their platform, I believe it just says repost. Reacts. Retweet for God's sake. He ruined Reacts. Reacts. X videos. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Double X. <laughs> Double. Yeah. Oh my All right, God. next. We got Sugar Shane up in here saying major shout out to Bobby Green for his win against Tony Ferguson last Word. night. King. Any chance he'll be back on the show? We got to get him back. Yeah. Hey, hey, he was razor sharp in this fight. And, you know, I get down with both these fighters, respect to both of them, but 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 uh, Mr. King came in there 
and because uh, he legally changed his name from Bobby Green to King. That's right. They still call him Bobby Green in the UFC, but his actual, you know, name now is King. But he put on an excellent performance. Represent the I E, baby. Yeah, the, actually, the all the fights, man, Poirier and um, and uh, Gaethje, that was a really good fight. I didn't see any. It ended off of, of a head kick. Oh, that's a good end. Two fights ended off of, of, a, of a head kick. <laughs> like, immediately over. Yeah. Damn. Oh, yeah, you get kicked Not in the head. Not the over, fuck bro. out. Yeah, get they kick so head. hard that you can get kicked in the head. It's over. Oh, yeah. It, if you get kicked, like, you could get kicked in the face and still stand up. Oh. But if you get kicked in the wrong part of the head, out you go. Kick it over here, baby pop. Or the right part of the head, I should yeah. say. Night, well, night. Night, night. Night, night. That's right. Night, night. The two guys went night, night in those fight fights. Okay. And okay. the kicks were, like, really fast, too. Like, they happened, like, pop, pop. blink of an eye. That Muay Thai training, man. Those kicks. Yeah. It was a good fight fight um, weekend. There was also a big boxing match between, uh, who was it? It was Crawford. Was and that on Friday? Terrence Howard oh, yeah. and Jamal Crawford. Or I think it's something Crawford, yeah. And they were both undefeated, and they were um, they were uh, unifying two belts in two different weight classes. That's that's how crazy these dudes were. Undefeated both. I think uh, Crawford. I I think Terrence. I didn't see it. I, I can't remember who won. I didn't see that fight. Terrence Crawford. There you go, Terrence Crawford. And. Uh, and Errol Spence, was it? Yeah, it was Errol Spence. And Crawford, Crawford beat Spence. There you go. It was a pretty good knockout, too. I don't well, think anybody uh, anticipated it. Errol Spence, he got knocked, man. They, they put up a... What a, round do you they know? Put, I think it was in the ninth round. Um, they put up a fucked up meme this, this morning of, <laughs> of Errol Spence... Like what he looked like after the fight with a gremlin, it was it was pretty bad. M- memes are great for stuff. Like memes that, memes but, never lose. No, it was on IG don't. immediately. <laughs> no, do I don't know if you could find it, Bolton, but they, it was the internet is undefeated. Correct, undefeated, dude. Man. I mean, <laughs> undefeated, you man. Never win. And <laughs> Errol Ar- Spence was a great champ, but like these two dudes were undefeated in the same weight class. They had to fight. And what's cool is they're both fighting. You know, like. They didn't wait years and years and years and years like till it was like, yo, come on, man. You guys should have fought like 10 years ago. Nah, they're doing it right now where they're both steady. That's like the way it goes. Yeah. This is the way. They're doing it right. They did it right. But, uh, yeah. So if you're a boxing fan, you got good fights this weekend. If, you got, if you're a U- UFC fan, got that too. Awesome. All right, next one. All right, I forgot to send this one in. I did this when I was back in Minnesota. Well, actually, Iowa. This is my uncle's wife's BMW X3M competition in launch mode. What? Like, kind of takes you away. Let me do this here. For a ride, I was not ready for that one. <laughs> kind of felt like, kind of, kind of felt like Callie's Tesla a little bit, just kind of launches not, you yeah. way back. <laughs> yeah. Callie goes fast, dude. Yeah, no, that thing's next. I got G forces, homie. <laughs> he said that real G's, G's, yeah, G's, main real G's. Look at that G force, yo. So many G's. We got Fabian up on here saying this is for Pedro when he was talking about uh being this character <laughs> outside that shop that one day. Oh, okay. <laughs> here's him outside of Green Thumbs. <laughs> Ah. Oh. oh my God, Pedro! Oh. <laughs> like Steve done. Harvey, we <laughs> gotta be together. Yeah, what happened to Pedro? He was here, and then he yeah, Pedro. Hey, left. Oh yeah, that was earlier. God. Oh yeah, that was earlier. I don't really care about. <laughs> yeah, by the way, that Bolton. is a good one, man. I don't know who put this shit together. <laughs> it is. I sent you some of the IG. I don't know if you can play it. I hope you can. Dang, he's got that. <laughs> I had, oh, a, man. I had a Gumby. I can't unsee this. <laughs> I had a Gumby. Next. You had a Gumby? I had a Gumby. Did you pokey. have Pokey, too? I had Pokey. Mm-hmm. Hey, guys, we're talking about this kind of stuff. What about, uh, what's his name? Uh, Pee-wee. Pee-wee Herman. Pee-wee Paul, Herman. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. Paul, uh, Paul Rubin. Herman. Paul Herman. Ruben, sorry. Ruben. Ruben. Paul Ruben. Paul Ruben. I meant to do that. Paul Ruben. Yeah, man. Good old Pee-wee. I know you were, but what am I? <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> Large Marge. You did some pretty um, crazy roles, man, when yeah. you think about it. That that row and blow was no oh, one yeah, no one amazing. thought he's amazing. No he one thought great. he would be in a movie like that and here he was. What about the movie where he jerked off in the movie theater? Well that was real life. <laughs> well that was real life. But he yeah. first got you know, one of his biggest breaks was being in Cheech and Chong's next movie. I'm sorry. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm not sorry. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> does anybody does anybody know what he passed away from? Cancer. Cancer. Oh man. Big C. He was uh dealing with it privately for the past four years. Damn. And he, he did leave us something, you know, written. Oh he did? Uh, oh, he for, did. for for the fans. Nice. So Damn, he was on cool. the yeah, rest in peace, man. Yep. Rest in peace, Paul Rubens. You guys ever met him? I don't remember meeting him ever. Not me. No. <laughs> I wish he'd have been cool, man. Especially when he got all that, he got all that flack for the, he got caught. You know, like, he was still cool. Like people had interactions and they said he was cool. So rest in peace, Paul Rubens. We got always bugging up in here saying, can I get a birthday shout out? I just turned 43 and he's having some weed and some shrooms with his born and raised bond. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Whoa. Damn, Happy that's birthday. a party. Nice born and raised bong too. Yeah, about to do some things. He's gonna have a nice little trip, yeah. He sure is. It's a party right there, bro. It's a party. Yep, enjoy. And let's see here. We got Rick up in here asking for a little joint rating. Kind of looks like Psycho Bus. <laughs> no rating. Don't <laughs> Hey, he's got are, a tip. Are you serious? All right. <laughs> to the neck. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is the ugliest neck you've ever seen in your life. A submarine right there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what. Man. Where do you start? <laughs> I don't know where I start. He did it on purpose. He Definitely. Had to, had to do it. This is set up, man. This looks like a mummified joint. Like it's been like held for about a hundred. 200 years and someone unearthed it looks like a skeleton finger and uh, um yeah it does look like a skeleton <laughs> right? finger negative 12. i mean there's there's just it looks like you tried to roll a spaceship like see like where, where the light end is you know you have the the front <laughs> it looks like a 730. yeah it's like, <laughs> like the concord yeah it's like a concord Little shape concord yep for this, you get a one for the funky that's it, yeah. right? <laughs> for this, I have to give you a two and a half, man. All right, that's Number gracious. <laughs> it looked like you got shark bitten, choked out. Oh, wow. Looks like someone beat you up while you were rolling that yeah, joint. Yeah, <laughs> looked like they, they said, you know what? Fuck your joint. Beat up the joint. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. But nice try. Mm, I don't know about that. Two and a half. <laughs> Uh, went, went through one of those vacuum sealers, you know, and it just sucks the air out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, there, there's a person that watches this show that completely hates us <laughs> because of our joint rating. Yeah. My Or yeah. my joint rating. My system is just too brutal. Too brutal. I've heard this yeah, in public. Uh, Should I soften it up? No, 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 keep it no keep right. True to your roots. Uh, yes, yeah. true to the roots, because no, that's the it. way it was put on me when I rolled the horrible joint. They, they let me know. Yes. Send dog most specifically. Yep. Yo, what the fuck is up with this? <laughs> oh, man, you, you roll it then. Nah, man, what the fuck is up with this? I had to learn to roll the pop, proper joint so I could stop getting that. What the fuck is this? Yeah. Thing, you know what I mean? So what the fuck was that? Just saying. <laughs> Rough, man. Sorry for the one person that doesn't like the rating system. So sorry. <laughs> next. Well, you're not going to like Rick's next joint because he used a dirty tip. Come on, oh. man. <laughs> this thing, oh. pregnant, dirty. Disastrous. Man. Look at that. <laughs> All right, if we're talking about angles, um, <laughs> tip is a doo doo. You haven't found a good one yet, but I'll say this: like one, <laughs> never 
submit with a dirty tip. It just. I think these are all on purpose to provoke. Yeah, it's probably on purpose. It's on purpose. But I'm going to say it for the people who don't know that this is on purpose. Never submit with a dirty tip. Amazing. It's just awful. Clean the tip. Gross. Alcohol. 90% alcohol. Just, you know, dip it in there for a little bit, then rinse it out. Clean the damn tip. There it is. All right. Now, look, aside from the obvious dirty tip, Shit is like bent back like a bow. I could string this and shoot an arrow with it right here in this section. There's a big ass dent like Cali Blaze head butted it right there because <laughs> he's angry that the tip wasn't clean. And then the top, um, I don't know what happened there. Um, but look, the bright side is you could get this joint straightened out. I'm pretty sure you rolled decent joints. You just did this on purpose. But if you did do this on purpose and this is all you got, I'm going to give you a three. Number three. You should only get a two because that tip is dirty. Uh, Number mm -hmm. two. <laughs> but at least you got the wrap around the neck right. Yep. <laughs> That's important. Gotta get the knack. It looks like he was playing pencils with that. Aww. You remember when he the won. game of pencils? Yeah, and he yeah. won. And he won. And he's won. Over it, it over. warped his pencil. <laughs> All right, next. And let's see, next up in here, we got Ross, and you guys were talking about like putting your weed in different sections of the joint. He's saying he put weed in different sections of the, of the joint, added some flavor, and he got super, super stoned. Oh, you could Look see he's him. super yeah. stoned. Hell Look yeah. That. <laughs> he is yeah. super duper stoned. Yeah. Mission accomplished. Oh. Well done. He looks, oh, yeah. he looks like the, He looks well done, yeah. Salute, or, sir. Like the mask oh, from V to Vendetta. Sure, he did the OG <laughs> mask. He said V. <laughs> this is the face of highness. Yep. <laughs> you want to be elevated? You gotta look like this. Ooh, for vendetta. All right, yeah. Be for vendetta, right there. Uh, <laughs> Want to get high? <laughs> Hang with him. Want to get high? Smoke. And then the last one of the day here. Let's see. We got AJ Sense asking, "Do you guys ever put mushrooms in your protein shake?" I've done it in the past, but not as of late. Because I don't want mushrooms in my protein shake. <laughs> <laughs> like the bars. bars. Them bars. Bars. Boy. Bars. Bolton, you can't play that little clip. I, I don't think I can, to be oh, honest. Come on, we've had oh. people to get in hurt before on these. No, it's not It's not even that. It's just not our uh, It's not our clip. Gotcha. Yeah, they've been, what a shame. Yeah, what a shame. They strike yeah, us for crap like this now. Oh, it's hilarious. Time. Um, word up. We want to thank you for your submissions. Keep them coming to be real TV contest at gmail.com and we will put them on. I now it's your turn. The voices of the insane asylum um, shall be heard. Got a comment, question, shout out, suggestion. Voice it now. Welcome to the insane. Asylum. All right, let's do this. We got David up in here asking, "Be real, how did you guys get involved with Tops Trading Cards?" Um, I'm not sure. I can't remember who was our our people that knew someone down there, but you know, they thought it would be a good idea to hook us up, and they were interested, and we were like, "Hell yeah!" And it, boom, it became a thing. And, we got oh, and you know, Mugs and Send Dog had been collecting top. Tops cards s since they were kids for for a very long time. I think they both still have. Well, Send Dog might have some of his collection, maybe. Um, Mugs, I'm not sure about. Might have sold all his. We got Dab Oopster up in here asking: Is radio still a thing in the United States? It's dead over here in Germany. Radio? Yep. Um, <sighs> depends on what the station is. Yeah, what city? Yeah, uh, you know, because, you know, in terms of hip-hop, yeah, the stations dip to low numbers. But in terms of other stuff like Latin music, that's, like, killing it out here, you know, in terms of who's listening to what. So it just depends what they're listening to. Certain genres have slowed down, but I think that's because the pro program directors and the music directors that are in these stations have lost touch with the people that actually listen to the station and they don't know how to communicate with them and and therefore they've dipped 
I don't think people want to hear curses in their music. Like, you know, we well, they can't, they can't run curses in the music. No, but that's what I'm saying. Radio. Why people don't listen to radio yeah. either. They go they to playlists. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Do your own yep. playlists. Uncensored yep. music they want. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And we got Rod up in here asking, do y'all still mess with RSO? Yes, we do. And yep. this show. SHO, baby. <laughs> Solventless hash oil. That's right. That's yeah. Shout out to my boy Nate from uh, Jungle Boys. He called me today. He took a flight to Hawaii. And they gave him one. He was like, first of all, he was like, I forgot to load it. I had it in my bag. I forgot to load it before I got on, so I did it in my chair. He was like, he's like, two people were like, are you smoking weed? Because it smells. It's not like distillate. It still smells. Yeah. So people smelled it. So he said, I took it quick. I just filled the cap. I didn't know how much to take, so we filled it, <laughs> which is like 300 milligrams or so. Bro, he was like, I was so high on this flight. I just couldn't wait for it to be over. He's like, I was sweating, you know, like holding on for dear life. But he was like, it was it was awesome. Right after I was you got more, I'm like, of course. Cause it's like <laughs> that was fun. God. Right when you pop pop one of those, um, the SHO, it should be dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yep. This is called the show. All right. <clears throat> And we got Rod up in here again asking, where's the worst environment to shroom in? Mm, the worst the space. Uh, Ikea. <laughs> <sighs> okay. I think the worst place is just around people that you're not comfortable with. How Absolutely. About that? I think in a club. For me, it would be a club. Yeah. Philippines. Philippines. Wow. Philippines. Philippines. <laughs> That's pretty. That's random. No, the, random definitely small. a club. A crowded club. A crowded I've liked club. it. I've done it in a club and loved it. If, if you're... Like, if you're a first timer, I wouldn't do it. You're not club. like everybody else, please. Yeah. But I got into it, man. Yeah, you're not like everybody else. Yeah, bro. Her different, different type of Herman. You're different <laughs> type of Herman. You're different, different type of Herman. I mean, I've been in a bunch of scenarios, you know, but like doing it at a club, I don't know, man. There's too many. You, I mean, you, you encounter too much negative energy there. I mean, there was a time that, yes. Dude's trying to prove it. themselves. I would do it in a club or whatever, you know, it didn't matter. <laughs> but now, no. Correct. Now I wouldn't do it. Yeah, this was probably 15 years ago. Yeah. It was a long time ago, yeah. Well, back back then, there was no bad place to do That's it. Right. We just yeah. did it. But yeah. if we're talking about now. Yeah. Yeah, now now that I know that I'm sensitive to positive and energy. And a negative energy, I know that there's a significant amount of negative energy in, in any club you go to. Oh. No matter how many positive people you have there, there's going to be some negative. And Drunk, you might, angry people. And you might encounter that, and that might give you a bad trip. So, like, for me, today, these days, it would be a club. Makes sense. True. Oh, yeah. All right. And we got Pedro saying, rest in peace to Angus Cloud of Euphoria. What? The TV show. For real? Rest in peace, man. Damn, that's that sucks. Young, he was cool, man. He was cool in in Euphoria. He he had a good character. Rest in peace, young. And we got herbs one up in here saying today's National Avocado Day. Bobo, get some oh. for the icon. Bobo, Sir Guacalat. Yeah. Aguacate, man. Will not be celebrating that, Sir Guacalat. Even even his background colors is avocado, by No, Sir Guacalot. Walk this way. <laughs> oh man, I can't walk. I can't walk on by. Walk it out. I can't walk like that. Walk it out. <laughs> walk it out. You won't see me walking. <sighs> Those boots were made for walking. <laughs> Are you walking in L in L A? Do you like walking? Do you like walking? <laughs> oh, no, man. Avocado day, I'll pass. Damn. But for those who celebrate it, you know, have at it. You know, enjoy. Excellent. Eat double for me. Bring it. <laughs> and we got Angel up in here asking for a moment of silence for my childhood icon, Pee Wee. Mm. Oh, right on. All right. Rest in peace, Pee Wee. Yeah, man. Hell yeah. And we got Lit Dad up in here asking, have any of you guys went swimming while on shrooms? I want to try this. Yep. I did it yes. with dolphins. <laughs> yeah. Did that on acid. I did, I did shrooms with dolphins. That never, was amazing. Never went swimming on shrooms. It's 
great. Piss yeah. women on acid. How was it? How was it? A trip. Was it cool though? Did it feel it was amazing? Cool. Yeah, yeah, it was Mushrooms awesome. It felt amazing. It was in the summertime too, yep. so it was awesome. the water was oh, the water so was yeah. And the way you feel just swimming is crazy. The way you're moving through the water, it, I loved it. You man. feel like you could be underwater longer. It was great. Maybe I hold your able, breath slightly. Maybe I'd be able to swim like that. <laughs> I think you would learn yeah. how to swim proper. For sure. yeah. Mushrooms, mushrooms, yeah. yeah. You don't know how to swim. He knows yeah. how to dog paddle. Dog pedal, I can do that. That is technically swimming, but it's not. You can stay afloat, though, right? Like you, you... I can't tread water. Okay. You That's... can. You just don't try. You could do it. I, you I could do it. You yeah. just don't you know do how. And I just can't get the rhythm of it. There's a rhythm. And I breathing. Can, and the breathing. Yeah, my breathing <clears> is rough. <throat> it's rough. It's because you don't trust. I stay yeah. in the three to five feet section. Okay. <laughs> three feet bobo and rising? Yeah. I was uh, right there. Yeah. Yeah. And we got Big J up in here asking about the time your sister met Easy E. Oh, that was probably for him. Um, what's our guest? Oh, because yeah. he was talking about how his sister was in a a, a band. Oh, that's in right. Right on. That was for him, Bolton. You missed that one. Dude. Yeah, I think it was God for B Real, right? Nope. No, no my no. sister never met Easy E. My yeah, and he was talking about how his sister was in like a a, pop a group, band, yeah, a band or something. Yeah. So. That was probably that. Well, try to deflect on me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I just thought I saw a clip or something that said something like that. I tried to look up that question before. What, what are you saying, bro? What are you saying, bro? <laughs> what do you mean? What does he mean? It says uh, right here on this clip, Easy E's bodyguard put his hand on Be Real Sister. No. Oh, that's, that's just what it says on a YouTube oh, video. No, not on my sister. No, it, has your, it just has your face on it, so that's why. I put it wow. On. Oh, it must be Fake crazy. news. Yeah, no, that's never happened. New. My sister's never. Yeah, no. Yeah. Mm -mm. It's on YouTube, like that? it's right here. Yes, yeah, on see. YouTube. Uh, yeah, let me put it right here. Let me look. Two weeks ago. <laughs> Two weeks ago. Oh, what? Ago. That's what on that's what? It, that's Why? TV. Why? TV on Be Real Sister. So yeah, maybe Bolton was right. Maybe There's... he was asking you that because he probably just saw this stupid clip. No. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. You're going to have to watch that afterwards just to see what kind of fuckery that is. Yeah, what kind of... That's yeah. clickbait. Yeah, right? Yeah, clickbait. My sister... None of my sisters have ever met Easy e Rest in peace. We got Angel up in here saying, Nice hat, B. Famous stars and straps. We need Travis on the show. Uh, I don't know if this was one of their hats. I think it was a different company. But yeah, Definitely. Yeah, they're dope. We got J-Dub up in here saying, I love Tone Loke's album, um, Loked After Dark, especially <laughs> songs like Chiba Chiba. Would love to see Tone on the show. Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah. Chiba Chiba, got to bring it on. I'm going to talk to him about that JetBlue flight. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. We got Scarecrow up in here saying, Yo, C, are you going to watch that new Marvel movie, Craven the Hunter? <laughs> Craven what? Craven the Hunter. <laughs> you sounded so not interested. In yeah, that. no. Like, what? Can't say I will. Like craving or craven? Craven. Okay. Like craving what? the hunter. That doesn't sound good either. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Craven. And next up in here, let's see. We got Tristan up in here saying, my little buddy on acid thought everybody was trying to kill him one time like he was convinced. He took too much acid. Yeah. We just didn't have what control, you, you know. I've had yeah. people who like freak out with a half a tab and literally like freaking out like people. I'm like, yo. That guy oh, well, that guy's probably a, around, a paranoid person right. by nature. Yep. You know what I mean? And can't handle it. That's it. Yeah. You have to have a good guide, man. Yeah. And someone there to slap you out of it, literally. Yeah. Slap man. out of it. Yeah, exactly. You're fine. Nobody but sometimes there. they'll even flip on the guide. You're trying to kill me too. Poison me. You're a part of it. And we got Kale up in here saying, Big Legends up to Cypress Hill. Thanks for all the awesome memories since 1991. I was 20 all the way in 91. Well, thank you. And we got Midget Mike up in here saying, When I hit this mega mill, y'all ready for me at the table? <laughs> Hell go. yeah, bro. Yeah, come on. You hit it, you could definitely come sit at the table. We'll talk about how your life is about <laughs> to change. Bring it. And how about you can change my life with yeah. what you just want? Real quick. 
quick. Billion, man. It's a little over a billion. That's crazy. Yeah. That's, uh, I think, the, the fifth. I don't know if it was the fifth or ninth biggest pot. Fourth. 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 Yeah. Fourth. That's crazy. What was the biggest one? I think it was 1.4 or 1.8 or something. I remember. 1.8 like, billion. Or, or almost two. Yeah, this was like almost a year $2 billion or two ago. Yeah. yeah. It was something like that, or it hit two billion. It was something it was crazy. Billion it like was, yeah. It was earlier like, this year. It was like two billion, and you were gonna take home close to a billion. It was crazy. Yeah. Sick. Check that out, Beer. Two point zero four there billion. You go. That's four. for the Powerball, though. Okay. Oh, yeah. okay. Damn. It's still the lottery. The biggest mega millions was one point five billion. Okay. You, yeah, but still, the other one was two billion dollars. Yeah. yeah. Two billion. It behooves you it. to play. Wow. We got Utah Hawk up in here saying, yo, be real. The unofficial, official Little League team of the Dr. Green Thumb show is back in action. Let's go Grizzlies and Coach Hawk. Come on. Go Hawk. Go Hawk. And, and Team Grizzlies. And the Grizzlies. And the Grizzlies. <laughs> oh, man. And we got Mike again asking, yo, B, did you watch Twisted Metal? The first episode has rock, rock superstar playing. In the last episode, they have Skull and Bones. Uh, two wow. Piece two, a two-piece. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's happy. I, you know, I don't know if I'm, like, I don't know if you remember, but I thought, like, in the original Twisted Metal game, we, I felt like we had a song in there. Did we? I think we did. Maybe that's one. why the tie-in. We might have had two songs in there, and may, maybe those are the two songs. But you said that it was uh, rock superstar and, and, and stuff. But what Skull song and Bones? Is, what song is Skull and Bones? Oh yeah, true. Are you saying uh, they just showed the CD Skull and Bones? On oh, the last oh, episode. okay, okay, oh, cool. I actually watched the uh, first like four episodes of that last night. It's actually really good. It's a little cheesy, but the Twisted Metal game was kind of cheesy at the same time. Yeah, but that's what makes the whole TV show pretty good. Like, everyone kind of needs to check it out. There's a lot of action. There's a lot of swearing. It's pretty funny. I'm going to check it out. And we got, that uh, was a big game for a minute, Twisted yeah, Metal. it was. Definitely. Yeah. yeah, you guys had uh, the song Lightning Strikes. Lightning Strikes. That's on Cypress 4. And that's on Twisted Metal on the game, right? Yep. Yep. Told you. Oh. See, I got a good memory, buddy. Don't. Fuck with me. His murmury is good, man. My murmury. His <laughs> murmury. My murmury. Nothing <laughs> more than murmury. We got Eminem up in here asking the table, what is one of the greatest opening lyrics of all time? Fuck, that's... Opening with so hard, it. man. Uh... <sighs> Dude. I'll... I'll... Uh... Public yeah. enemy, bring the noise. Uh, Bass, how low can you go? Just that, those two lines itself. Oh, I'm gonna have to go with uh, Cube. Straight out of Compton, crazy motherfucker called that. Ice Cube. Yeah. I mean, it, if that ain't damn. a start line, I don't know what is. <laughs> That's a pretty damn. aggressive start line. Man, yeah, you're right. That's what I was going to take, I swear on anything. That's all I can come up with. Like, what was that most powerful beginning? And then he, he stole my shit. Come on, Just not on purpose. I'm dead. God See, I swear on everything on my life, man. I got to th rethink. That's one of the most obvious. It Chuck is. D has, like, at least five songs like that. 1989, Adaba, another summer. Great one. Yeah, he does. Get down with the fucking drama. It's been a long time. I shouldn't have left you. Yep, that's a good one right there too. Rock him. Got Bobo. I'm I'm down right now. I'm I'm. We're both yeah. down. Blank. Yeah, we can go on. I would have thought you would have started. Well, here's but, a little story. I got to. But I I kind of went with bass. You went with bass. You were yeah. doubling up. Oh yeah, okay, you were like cool. I kind of doubled up. All right. Or here we go. Don't waste is. your time. Bam. Just move on. Right. I got nothing. I'm sorry. I really am a blank. Blank? Kenny Blank and Chip. <laughs> we got Johannes up in here saying Twisted Metal is a property of Sony. Oh. Yeah. And we got Vivid up in here saying, What's up, everyone? Haven't caught the live in a while, but I'm watching. <clears throat> much love. And you guys helped me get through my new job in the AMs. Hey, thank you very much. Oh, Glad yeah. to get you through it, baby. That's what we do. That's what we do. And that seems to be it. 
Word up. Thank you. We know more come as they go. Um, possibly because we're coming to the end. Make sure you check us out in the mix tomorrow on Twitch. B underscore real TV is the place. I right, you got a Twitch account. Join us, everybody on Twitch. You already know to stay locked in. Um, everybody on YouTube, you could choose two places to watch us mix. That's uh, right here on Twitch, B underscore real TV. You can uh, use your Amazon Prime account if you have one to create a Twitch monthly subscription for free so you could check out these mixes. Or you can go to the home site, www.bereal.tv, become a member, and boom, these mixes go straight to you. All right? So um, yeah. do that. Uh, so what were we gonna say? Taylor Swift is coming to SoFi. She's doing a show this week in, in SoFi. Mm -hmm. So they have, I think, what eighty-two thousand seats, right? Yeah. The minimum is six hundred a seat. So you do that times that is almost fifty million yeah. just for that one that show. one night, one show, just ticket sales. For, I think it's forty something million. I just did the math before at the lowest range. I bet you you know add scalpers on the high tickets because there's tickets that are gonna be going for thirty thousand. You know, twenty thousand crazy numbers. So oh, wow. it'll probably do eighty to a hundred million in ticket sales. And she Plus takes merch. home seven of that. Oh, well, I thought it was kill. ten, right? Or ten. Yeah, yeah, and then seven was from just ticket sales, and three was from merch and something food. like that. Yeah, yeah. merch and uh, what's the other thing they give? Food and beverage or food something. Food and beverage, yep. Dude. Food and beverage and merch, another Sorry. three mil. That's crazy because not all artists give food and beverage. When you're racking in, but when you rocking in, mil. yeah, when you you <laughs> yeah, sell dude. a tickets like Taylor yeah. Swift does, you, you yeah. get that. Shit. That's insane. Oh, all that. Led like, Zeppelin. That's, yeah, that's but Led Zeppelin didn't generate that kind of money though. Like no, not mind. like no, right. not like that. That's not like insane. That. At their time, bro. right. That was like as big as it was at that time, right. and they they were doing things at their time. But like it does, it no, it's so it's generate this pales thing. in comparison. And her her tour is constantly going. So yeah. think of the billions it's generating. A oh year. yeah, for sure, it's generating yeah. billions a year in show. God. She is about to be one, of, probably more paid than Oprah. She's stimulating our economy as we speak. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, think of all the shows and the people who get jobs when those shows come into town. Like oh yeah, everything fills up. So Everything's, it definitely does. Excellent. Every yeah. city within that state that that tour touches makes money. Yep. From the gas mm -hmm. stations to the yep. hotels to all the fast food spots and the restaurants and uh, you they know all, they all benefit. They all benefit. You know, um, <clears throat> switching reels. You know, we were talking about this uh, some days ago. Uh, cocaine bear. Yeah. And, uh, cocaine <laughs> shark. <laughs> well, I saw Cocaine Shark. Okay. I watched it. Exclusive. Tubi. <laughs> amazing, right? Tubi, so ama Tubi the, original? A Tubi original Cocaine Shark. <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> sometimes you have to question the writers. Like, are you yeah. really yeah. like? Are you really serious about releasing this? <laughs> You know, but look at that. I mean, that looks oh, official. Wow, Cocaine dude. shark, please. Uh, Asylum, <laughs> the score leads all you guys. You know, just give it a why don't you throw cocaine shark watch party? I mean, <laughs> I might, I just might, I just might, I might just even go. watch dude, that. I might I, even I, go on and watch it. with you. Man, sure. Come on, man, it's you're gonna be like, oh my god, really? You're gonna be like, really? I'm down, you know, is that great? It's, it's man. <laughs> Amazing! Man, it's it's one of the best Oscar worthy. See, I mean the Raz the Razzies they bypass this. They don't need, they don't they don't even want to review this. Mm. I don't know what award that this would make. Yeah. Oh man! So uh, yeah, we're gonna do a watch party. People are down. You know, I'm please. Down. I mean, it can't be me that just sees this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. yeah. It can't just be it me. It can't guys. just be you know a jewel for you. Yeah. You know, so if I hook it up, you know, please join me. All right. <laughs> Work. All right. Oh, well, that's gonna do it for us, man. We want to thank everybody for getting down with us. We want to thank Tyler Yahweh for coming through and uh, you know, sitting in with us first of many times. And uh we want to thank you for your love and energy and support that you give us you know, on the daily that we do this show. And we send it right back to you because, you know, we love y'all too. Positive vibes to all y'all out there. C-minus. Uh, thanks to everyone here at the table. B, Blaze, Eric Bobo. Shout out to everyone at the Treehouse. This Dom, this Ray, this Colton. Shout out to uh, 
Dro, shout out to Eitan, shout out to Izo, shout out to Javi Lopez, shout out to everyone that hangs out. Uh, you can follow me over at C minus fan four on all the social medias. And I'll see you very soon. Eric Bobo. Oh, tonight I'm doing a special Bob Marley mix at seven or eight o'clock tonight on Twitch. So that's where I happy birthday buys for Eric Bobo. All right, catch me on the socials, uh on Twitter or they calling it now X. Uh, at Eric Bobo uh, on IG and threads, uh, Eric underscore Bobo, Discord, Bobo's Corner, and the Asylum uh, Discord server. Uh, big ups to everybody here at the table and upstairs at the treehouse. Um, don't forget, uh, new album, uh, Ritmo Machine Experience. It is out now on all uh, streaming platforms. So, uh, be sure to check that out. And uh, big up to Team Icon and Snacks and I. We thank you for your support. Buddy. Shout out to the Insane Asylum. Thank you guys so much. Shout out to Ray Morning Shot Films. Shout out to The Dominator. And what's going on, Blaze? Not much, man. Shout out to everybody at the table, everybody who supports our show, 5150's Insane Asylum. Um, everybody who supports our company, my family, everybody. Much love. I'll see y'all. Thanks. Be open to things. Um, be open to conversations. Be open to people. A lot of times we close off and we isolate. We don't want to hear what someone else has to say because we're in our own head and whatnot. But when you do that, you sort of um, lose connection with people. You lose the pulse of situations. And sometimes you leave yourself out. Open up become a part of of the circle or you know just engage with people man you know um self-isolated you could do that every now and then to like be in your thoughts and, and figure things out man but like you know it's all about engagement with people and creating a positive energy with a with a good circle of people so again i say be open swallow that